passion, drive, and patience. The formula of winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything for you to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED lights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has it covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices that you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP it needs to be and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Again, ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. What's up? It's another one. We're back. It's a loader and stoner. Yeah. And uh, um, I'm your host. I am the stoner. My name's Colton. I'm stoned. You are? Yeah. Why am I getting feedback now from me? God damn motherfucker. <laughs> are you messing with me? <laughs> no, I, I, I was getting feedback. But we're good but now. But we're good now. We're good now. Yeah, because we had some issues last week. Remember that? Um, yeah, we had issues at the beginning of this one, but yeah. I think you kind of jinxed us because, like, five minutes before the show, you had to. Take I got a poop. Shit. I got a poop. I couldn't help what? it. Why are are you not regular though? Like, when do you? Use I'm going through stuff? some irregular stuff right now. Okay, I'm in the middle of job changing or what? Figuring out what I'm doing there. Uh, you know, I'm just I'm in the middle of some irregular. Or how do you say? Irregular little titties? Irregular, irregular. Irregular little titties. Yeah. That's how you say it? Yeah, I'm sure. But yeah, yeah. shit's irregular right now. Uh, But no, I mean, it, 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 we're in the evening time. I mean, this is a time I think a lot of people poop in the evening time. So yeah, I, I had to poop. I'm, a, I'm, I'm straight out of the box first thing in the morning. Oh, I poop in the morning too. I okay, do two a days. But- Probably three a days. I do two or three a days. Is that good or bad, though? I don't know. Honestly, I have no idea. I finally went today. Um, I mean, you know, finally. Ang- I just told you I do it two a days. You, you say finally like you haven't gone in days. No, I, I, I hadn't gone in. What? Like, probably over 32 hours. So you, you go a whole day without pooping? I, I did. I did yesterday. Hmm. And, then, and then about lunchtime today. Is that regular? No, my I'm usually so you're bitching, you're, you're, you're getting on me about being irregular, but yeah, you're yeah, not but, even regular. Yeah, but mine is just usually explosive diarrhea from the beginning of anxiety of first thing in the morning. Mm. Okay, you, you you never have diarrhea, do you? Oh yeah, I've had diarrhea. I had diarrhea bad because remember I got my teeth pulled. We talked about that a few weeks ago. Uh-huh. Uh, and they prescribed me pres- papa, they prescribed me some antibiotics. You still on those? Uh, no, I'm he still on those. No, I'm good now. But uh, I was on those antibiotics, and dude, they made me shit my brains out, and I had diarrhea almost every day. And then, because of the diarrhea, I had to put Vaseline on my asshole, and I felt like some washed up, used up whore because my asshole was itching from the diarrhea. Do you um? Do you have any hemorrhoids yet? Or no, I, I mean I have yes, but currently I do not. If that's what you're asking. I mean, I, I, I've had, I've had a permanent one for about, I'd say eight years now. External um, hemorrhoid, hemorrhoid, external. Yeah. Yeah. It's on the outside. Oh. It's right above, uh, the, so it's right where the crack of the ass at the top of the butt. Oh, your ass clit. Yeah. It's my ass clit. It is. It, it is an ass clit. Yeah. Uh, cause it's perfectly centered right above my asshole. I bet women would have, would, would, would die to have a perfectly symmetrical ass clit. Well, it's, I mean, I, I it doesn't feel good. Like I, but, but it looks I good, never, huh? put, I, I never put Vaseline, uh, on it. I, I just do like. I'm sure. You just rub in some, you know, conditioner. That's on, it. On the anus, straight conditioner. Yeah, yeah, oh, I don't yeah. Think that's you, good, dude. 
Yeah, but you you don't feel as sticky because Vaseline is it's it's like petroleum jelly. Like it's it's going to be back there for a while and you're never going to feel clean if you put Vaseline on your asshole. OK, I, I'm, I'm just being out front like they even say you're not supposed to use Vaseline for like anal sex. I don't like, really if we should get into that. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I'm glad we got into this. But at the same time, I don't think I am. I think I'm ready to get back out. Okay. So I don't think we want to spend this whole co- podcast talking about shit and poop and hemorrhoids. I just, um, you know, no anal sex. No, I think it's just you asked me if I was good. And it's like, you know, I think about it. I don't think I am good, actually. No, I'm not. I'm not good. So I'm just so going to keep it moving. The last time you put Vaseline on it. Yeah, you know, that's when I had the diarrhea issue a couple weeks ago. I've been good ever since. No itchiness, no uh, no burning sensations, no nothing. I'm good. Is that something you're going to stick with? As a No, I've already, regiment? no, the, the Vaseline's already put back, you know, about in the bottom drawer. It's, it's gone. It's already off the, the top shelf, if you will. How did it make you feel? I mean, it, it gave me instant relief, but like I said, uh, like in my mind, it made me feel like a washed up dirty whore. Uh, on the external, like how did it made me feel? Oh, great, dude. It gave me instant relief. Why are we talking about this? <laughs> I'm getting out of it. You know what? The easiest way I can think about getting out of this is to just play a voicemail. So if you want to leave us a voicemail, 813-906-8806. What? What? Do you think gay men um, enjoy hard poops? Probably. I mean, I think all men prefer, like, a solid poop, you're saying, right? Well, yeah, a solid poop. Yeah. What I'm saying, though, but if you enjoy a solid, pretty good log, does that make you gay, though? No, no. That's on the way out. That's not on the way in. I think when you like a solid log on the way in, that makes you gay. Well, how- <laughs> but, I mean, does it really matter in or out, though? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it matters. It's a big difference. You know there's an outstroke in gay sex, right? I'm just saying. Yeah, but you know what I mean. You know, it's, it's, it's only one push out rather than multiple pushes. You know, what What are we doing here? Three, two, one. We're looking at the voicemails that we're doing. We're getting out of the anal talk, and we're getting to some voicemails, and then we'll see where it takes us from there. That's what we're doing, actually. And this one here is from the three, two, one. And like I said, if you would like to call and uh, leave us a voicemail or shoot us a text message, you can. 813 813- 906-8806. Save that number. Hey, loner and stoner. Great podcast. Subtle, you sound just like Bubba bitching every day of the week. This is a good work, guys. <laughs> Love listening to you. Have a good night. Bye. You know, a lot of people got, like, thought I was being a bitch last week uh, about the technical technical issues we were having. Uh, I... I Am I losing you? Is that what's going on? Oh, no. Tuttle is going to flip the fuck out. Tuttle's going to flip out. I already know it. He's going to flip out. I don't know what happened, but we lost him. This will be week two in a row. And um, speaking of this uh, whole problem we're having, or this is week two of this problem that we're having, uh, last week when this happened, Seth turns to me and goes, you know what? That's why I buy a $30 mic, and that's it. And I run it right to my phone, and I have no issues. And uh, that stuck with me because now here we are, Tuttle, we're talking about the equipment, all this nice uh, equipment that we have to the board and to the computers with the XLR cable microphone instead of using USB microphones and all this shit. And uh, it seems to be that Tuttle's and uh, – sorry, it seems to be a Tuttle's and our, my equipment is uh, – the more expensive equipment isn't doing so hot. It seems to be we're having issues week after week. So let's see if he connects back in. In the meantime, I'm going to keep it moving because I actually owe Buzzard Bob. Buzzard Bob, I know you're listening. Uh, I owe you an apology. And the reason I owe Buzzard Bob an apology is because, um, well, we all know my history at the BRN. And at one point, you know, myself, Tuttle, Trace, Lummox, we all did a show, an after show, if you will, and we did it uh, We did it at the BRN. Well, there's this little small little rumor that I might have started when I was working there. And um, and yes, I am the one that started it. Hello? Yeah, I'm back. Okay. I, I'm, 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 I, I can't do this this week. I, I really, really can't. Yeah, I know. But you're back now, so. right? 
Yes, I'm back now. All right, so uh, what I was doing was I was actually, I owe Buzzer Bob an apology. I was just cutting straight to it. I owe Buzzer Bob an apology. And the reason being is because way back when, when you and me and Lummox and Trace, and we always used to do a show together, I started a rumor back then. And I don't know if you remember the rumor that I started, but I did. Oh, uh, yeah, I do. What was it? Ass eating. Correct. I went and started the, 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 the I am the culprit, culprit, I have to be honest. I started the rumor that Buzzard Bob likes to eat ass. Yes, that was me. So recently, uh, another listener, he, he uh, you know, Richard Longwood, we all know him. He, he makes a Facebook post and he says, if you're a guy and you are getting your ass ate, you are not straight, bottom line. Which, quite frankly, I, I, I disagree, because if a woman's eating your ass, I, I think you're still straight. But that's here nor there. What, what's your thought? My, my thought is, that, and I talked to Richard Longwood about this on Messenger, it's impossible for you to do anything gay with a woman. Agreed. Now, there may be some some uh, gay tendencies, like, you know, if she's got a fucking 12-inch strap on and she's just slamming you in the asshole with it. How I mean, is that any gay tendencies at, at all? It's it's a woman. Uh, you know, no, no, no. The act's not gay. You're doing it with a woman. You're right. You're having heterosexual sex, heterosexual sex, but it's just kind of a gay act, no? You don't think it represents, uh, you know, maybe just a little well, bit? I- Let's look at the definition of gay. Isn't that man on man? Yeah, and you're doing a male on male act with a female. But, but you just uh, you just uh, said it. No, you just said it. It's with a female. It, yeah, it can't correct. Be gay so it's just it it's, it's, it's not gay. It's it, you're still having heterosexual you whatever you on. say. It's fucking. <sighs> I hear the echoing my now. He's on my side now, and it's going to drive me fucking nuts. But with that being said, Pat, HR Pat, by the way, that's your new name. I don't know if you knew that or not, but mm-hmm. I think we had a guy reach out to us and say your new name's HR Pat. Uh, but HR Pat, heterosexual sex with a female doing gay tendencies. Yeah, that's the thing. I think, I, I think I'm sticking with it. Yeah, I'm following no, that. It, even if a chick uses a strap-on on a dude So that's you're having not straight gay. sex. Right, because it's a female, right? But you're doing gay-like things. Yes, I think that's the best way to break it down. You're having straight sex, but you're doing gay-like things. Just just go back to the definition. Man on man, that's homosexual. Yeah. It can't, it can't be gay if it's with a woman. Uh, I Sorry. agree with you. The sex itself is not gay. You're still having straight sex, but you're doing gay-type things. Anyways, Buzzer Bob comments on this post, uh, this post that he that Richard Longwood post saying, you know, if you're a guy and you're getting your ass ate, you're not straight. Bottom line. So Buzzer Bob, uh, he comments and says, I don't care if you're gay, straight, male, female, transgender, or whatever do you think you are. If you eat ass, you're a sick son of a bitch, and I hope you get food poisoning. So I saw it as a time for me to fucking interject, right? And very, very, very rarely do I comment on Facebook. But I do. And I said, this is coming from the OG of ass eating, Buzzy Bob. And Buzzy Bob did not like this. <laughs> oh, did you see it, Tuttle? Or, sorry, did you see no, it, HR I, Pat? I, I didn't, no. Um, I'll, I'll make it quick. I'll, I'll get great through it. So Buzzard Bob responds to me. And this is what he says. And I have not responded back to Buzzard Bob. So this here on the podcasting is my response to him. I am formally saying I'm sorry, Buzzard Bob. Uh, Let me read the response first. Colton, I like you. But would you please stop that ass-eating bullshit? It has gone a long way. Everybody keeps saying it to me. And everyone knows it pisses me off. And that's why I don't call the show anymore. Look, I like joking around. Uh, And I like doing some things, but I don't like being labeled a filthy ass eater. Not even as a joke. I'm now retired as a truck driver. I'm 64 years old with a grandchild on the way. Well, congrats to that buzzard, Bob. He says, call me a motherfucker. Anything else, I don't care. But please let me enjoy my retirement years. Not being labeled that filthy ass eater name. I love you, Tuttle, and Bubba Clem. The show has been around for many, many years. So please show my old ass a little respect and stop. Mind you, his punctuation and stuff like that, you know, it's a little. Uh, uh, I'm an yeah. old man now and don't want to be remembered that way. The older we all get, just look at Tuttle. He's no longer an alcoholic, and I'm proud of him. 
and Lummy. He's cut way Wait. back on the drinking, and he's straightened up since he's a dad now. But anyways, I love you, my friend. Hashtag Bubba Army. Oh, and by the way, if I ever get my old ass back to Florida, I owe, I owe you and – by the way, he spells your name Tuttle, T-U-T-T. It's T-U-D-D. Anyways. That's fine. I owe you and Tuttle a punch in the face for starting that shit. And then I'll buy you some Chick-fil-A. And then he posted a, like, a selfie of himself. He looks pissed off. He's got a Bubba Army hat on. And, yeah, looks like he's sitting in his what? recliner. Why does your gray gray mustache have brown stains in it? No, no, just, no. Just so that's where I'm getting with this, Tuttle, is I'm here I'm formally. Asking. I'm actually crossing it off of my list. No more jokes about Buzzard Bob. The Buzzard Bob segment is going to be closed. Uh, I'm no longer going to make any ass-eating jokes, Buzzard Bob. On this day, June, uh, well, I don't know what day this airs. You know, on this 11th. midweek of June, well, today's the 11th, but it doesn't air on the 11th, Pat, you see? Sorry. On this day, June 13th, June 11th, whatever the hell we're going with, leave it all in. I am apologizing to Buzzard Bob. I am sorry, and I will no longer be making your ass-eating jokes. Thank you. I mean, it, there is a little bit of a stain, but I'm, I'll am i I'll digress. It's and a not, nicotine not stain. It. It's I a nicotine stain. Smoked. I don't think he does. <laughs> But, I mean, I've never had a woman, I've never done that, and I've never had a woman do it to me, and I don't know, like, if I could have a chick do it to me, though. Oh, you gotta try it, right? Don't you try everything at least once? Yeah, yeah of course, but I just, I haven't. I just, like, I don't know, like, I, I, I would never ask for it. Now, if she just went for it, like and she was aggressively what, wanting. What do you mean to, if she's aggressive? Like 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 she's gonna dom you, motherfucker. She's gonna take you and bend you over and spread your ass cheeks and start eating your asshole. I mean, she could. <laughs> could be a little squirrely. Okay, could we'll get, see. Could get around the backside. I tried to get. You know what? And ironically, I tried to get away from this ass eating topic, and we're circling back. So I'm gonna try to get away from it again. Carolina Home Tech uh, LLC left us a voicemail. Hey guys, this is Carl from Charleston. Um. I was listening to your story about the funny farm, Tuttle, and I remember when it happened. I feel bad for you. I, I appreciate you have become um, a more sober person, which means you don't drink. That's awesome. Um, but talking to yourself, you, you were like, man, they talk to themselves. And have either of you ever gone camping alone? What the fuck is this guy talking about? And this guy was kind of creeping me out, but... Oh, well, I'll um, let him finish so himself. Hold on. Paddled out on a kayak and camped on an island. And maybe, you know, so I did this. I, I brought my dog. I had a cool dog. I went out and camped alone. <laughs> and I just, you know, I listened to music and my headphones or the speaker or whatever. All right, uh, skip ahead 10 seconds. Era. Those were, they were covering songs. It was really cool. Garage Inc. Skip ahead another 10 Person. seconds. I'm very <laughs> normal. Um, I like to be around people, but I also like to be alone. So I identify with both you guys. Been a big fan. You know, you've seen me around. Skip ahead another 10 seconds. On everybody. Um, but I understand the funny farm to get in the funny farm. Whew. Skip another 10. Charles. Hold on here. So I need to okay. probably reach out to him and say, hey, Hootie, how you doing? You okay? Oh, hold on. We got. We'll have something here. Band, the guy might buddy. have a point here. He's um, saying but, he might need to reach out to Hootie. He's leaving us, you know, a three-minute voicemail. He might need to. Hold on. I understand the funny farm to get in the funny farm. Whew. And now I just found out that Hootie Who was in there, so I need to probably reach out to him and say, "Hey, Hootie, how you doing? You okay? You living in a van down by the river?" Okay. And that's it. Do you have any clue what the fuck he's talking about? But I, I did want to ask you this. Uh, I saw this news story. Do you have an inner monologue? Like when you're so, uh, there are some people that don't have an inner monologue like do you monologue or you talk kind about that of, little voice in your head sometimes yeah like when you're when yeah. you're doing something all right i'm going to the refrigerator yeah like open up the refrigerator if, gonna do this gonna do that like do you have that little voice i think i caught you doing head? something that's along these lines and i've never brought this up to you what the other day when you were walking from my from you're at my house and I actually mm -hmm. brought this up, I think, to Shelby or Marco or somebody recently. But when you were mm -hmm. walking from your truck to my front door, 
I couldn't help mm-hmm. but to notice you started with your right foot when you got out of your truck. Mm-hmm. And when you mm-hmm. came to get to my front door, you, it's like you're, you were going to land on a left foot door entry, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like you were going to cross mm-hmm. the threshold on the left door. And you kind of stutter stepped it. And I was like, did that motherfucker just stutter step it to make sure that he started his, 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 his walk, his journey to my front door on a right foot and that he crossed the threshold on the right foot? Did I see well, you proper? Yeah, that is the case because like or is it's, it a not thing? Right, it, it's not right or left. It's I always have to end what I'm doing on an odd number. Oh, so it's a counting thing. Yeah. So like if I start on my right foot, that's one left foot, two. So I got to end on the right foot, back three. Number. Yeah. Okay, but okay. if I start with my left, that's a one. I can end on my left. It, oh, so yeah, it's more second about, is right. So, so, so it's more about ending on an odd. No, so you're not actually starting on the right foot or ending on the right foot. Well, you are subsequently, but that's not your goal. Your goal is to start on step number one and end on step number seven or step number thirteen nine. or step number yeah. twenty-seven, something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, odd number. So, will you count your? Okay, 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 okay. So, when you got out of your truck and you walked to my front door, let's say that was thirty-one steps. You counted all thirty-one, and do you count one, two, three, or do you count by five? How do you count it? I count it in my head. I like. I don't like. I've gotten so good at it. Like, I don't have to like do the like when you're counting where you got to move your lips and stuff. Yeah. It, yeah. It's it's like, and I even talked about this with Bubba, like. You know that I don't wear underwear. Oh, I've known that so, for a while. Bubba was blown okay. away by that, but I've known yeah. that. And because I was blown away too. Like, yo, how does how does your sack and your skin and everything not get, you know, stuck to your jeans or in the zipper? But go ahead. It, it, oh, no, I've I've definitely zipped up my sack before, and it's, it's not fun, uh, especially on the way back. And um, I really don't like get the point of not wearing underwear, but we're, we're digressing too far. So you're, you'll step well, you one, one, one. It's years of playing uh, high school baseball. No, it's league, not. No, it's not. Ball. No, the fuck it's not. I can have several hundreds of listeners text me right now at 813-906-8806, and they will disagree with you. I played soccer. I played baseball. I played. I wore underwear, and I still wear underwear. But you didn't wear the compression shorts. Yes, I have a pair right here in the drawer behind on. me. Yes, I have. Well, see. You're still young, though. No, you're just fucking weird. But also at the same time as I'm counting the um, footsteps, usually depending on the steps or my stride, I count the sways of my balls. Wait, what? No. Okay. Now you're fucking with me. No. But, I... But you don't count the sway of your balls. You yes, might count I your. Do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Why I the promise fuck you. You don't, dude. Okay. So if I'm taking, usually you get a sway for every step, right? I've never thought about it. Do you need me to practice real quick? <laughs> I mean, you do get a sway from every step. I don't correct? think you if do. I think you get there. a sway for every two steps. Cause I think it's a jiggle and a, a jig and a jiggle, a step and a repeat. No. no, see, you're you're not as experienced as I am. Oh my, not you know, my balls right. don't hang as low. I'm fucking fifteen years younger. Uh, my balls still get pretty tight. Well, evidently not. You're counting the sways. You get a you get a sway per a step. Well, it all depends. Like when I'm cold, they get tight. When when it's hot and humid, like oh sometimes... no shit, you don't say that. That's how the testicles work. Yeah, but but sometimes like you know a sway will get off a rhythm because it'll stick to the side of the leg. Mm. Hold on, you want to take this call real quick? It's my personal number. Hold on, let's see if I can figure out my board here. Hold on. Uh-oh. Hello? 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 Hey, we're recording and you're actually on it. Oh, no. <laughs> I just thought about it when I called. I was like, I forgot he had his podcast. Yeah, we're recording. Do you want to say anything to the Bubba Army? Because it's going to make it. Um, hi. Oh, okay. <laughs> that works. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I, I mean, had, I'm done with work for the day. You're done with work? Okay. What'd you have for lunch? I had, um, what did I eat? I think I ate, um, applesauce and... By the way, for those listening, this is this is my girlfriend. This is Shelby. Okay, so you had what? I'm sorry? And she's applesauce. over 18, by the way. She <laughs> ate applesauce for lunch. <laughs> applesauce and like um, crackers with like lunch meat and cheese on it. 
A Lunchable. You had a Lunchable. Is that what you're saying? You had a little juice box yeah, with a Lunchable? Like a, 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 a homemade Lunchable. And yeah, to top it off, I had orange juice with it. <laughs> okay. Okay. You left your orange juice here. Uh, of which, you left your orange juice here, and that orange juice was made for mimosas this past weekend, uh, which I don't drink. And then you left orange juice here that has pulp in it. Ew. <laughs> Nobody drinks pulp. I love pulp. Oh, it's, it's so the good. Only way to drink it. Oh. Yes, it is. And it's like in your mouth and like. Mm-hmm. You, can get extra yeah. pulp. you can get extra pulp too. Yes, where it's yes. Like, extra, yes, yes. I, yeah, all the extra pulp. In that's it. disgusting. Um, <laughs> okay, I mean, nothing to the Bob Army. You'll be at the Tampa Tarpons game with me, right? Yes, I'm excited to see everyone. Okay, well, there you go. All right, I'll call you when we get off the air. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> I mean, that was unexpected, right? Yeah. Do you want to know also something I do? I um I count my bites when I eat. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. Does that have to land on an odd or even number as well? Yeah, odd number, and I'll take a smaller bite so I can end on an odd number. Seriously. I've seen you stutter step it, yeah. so I, I do believe it. I do believe yeah. it. That's just to me. Does that's, that make me crazy? Yeah, kind of, a little bit. You don't think so? I mean, you think that's normal? It's it's just it's more of an OCD than anything or compulsive yeah, very I will say I, I checked to make sure my garage door is shut at night, probably three or four times. Oh, I used to be late checking the door or like uh, making sure the burners are off on the oven. See, that never that that big to me. I've always every time I'm done cooking, I always make sure they're off. So that that never got you to me. What the other thing, huh? You wouldn't feel bad like if you burnt your parents' house down. Fuck yeah, I'd feel bad, but that's just not one of my OCDs that I have triggered. Uh, so a man from the four hundred seven says, "Man, the show last week was a complete cluster f for sure, but I still enjoyed the Tuttle meltdown. I laugh my ass off. Keep it up." And another somebody from the five six two says, "Hey, loner and stoner, been loving the show even with the tech issues. Split on the outro though, but one of you think is who who by the five six seven eights. What the hell is that?" Matches well with uh, the intro. Stick in there, guy. Woo five, six, seven, eight. By five, the five, six, six seven, eight, eights. Five, six, seven, eights are like, um, I, no, that was the crazy eights. Uh, I thought that was another band that was on the uh, Quentin Tarantino Kill Bill soundtrack. Let's see here. I think I might have pulled it up here. I don't know for sure. Let's see if this is it. Hold on. <laughs> That's it. Oh, yeah. yeah, this is from Kill Bill. I know what this is now. I didn't know it was a bunch of like Chinese people that sung that song. Did you? Yeah, for yeah, for Kill Bill, yeah, it's the same it's the same um I did not know same group. Yeah. Okay. So he's he's recommending that as our outro song. Tuttle thoughts. I I still don't think we need one. I don't necessarily think we do either. I'm cool with what we got going on right now. I love a great deal just as much as the next guy, but I'm not going to crawl through a bed of hot coals or go out of my way just to save a few bucks. And if I am, man, it's got to be easy. No hoops, no BS. So when Mint Mobile says it's easy to get wireless for 15 bucks a month with the purchase of a three-month plan, I'm going to call them out on it. Turns out... It's really that easy. It's that easy to get wireless for $15 a month. The longest part of the process was the time I spent on hold waiting to break up with my old provider. That's a nightmare. Wish everything was as easy as Mint. All plans come with high-speed data and unlimited talk-to-text delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your old phone number with you, along with all of your existing contacts. To get this new customer offer with your three-month premium wireless plan for only $15 a month, you must go to mintmobile.com forward slash Bubba. That's mintmobile.com forward slash B-U-B-B-A. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com forward slash Bubba. $45 upfront payment required, equivalent to $15 a month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Speed slower on 40 gigabytes on unlimited plans. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Okay, it's time to commit. 2024 is the year for prioritizing yourself. Begin your new smile journey with Byte, and you could start seeing results in just two to three weeks. Just order your at-home impression kit today for only $14.95 at Byte.com. Byte clear liners are doctor-directed and delivered to your door. 
Treatment costs thousands less than braces, plus they offer financing options, accept eligible insurance, and you could pay with your HSA, FSA. Get 80% off your impression kit when you use code WONDERY at Byte.com. That's B-Y-T-E dot com. Start your confidence journey today with Byte. But I mean, I'm not opposed to hearing. I don't know. I just don't know. I have a bunch of things in the sound. <laughs> Yeah. Well, so. was that about my shoes? You know, I heard the word on the street. They say that. You know, I heard the word on the street. They say that Patrick Fowler took too many zombies and a total killer climax. I couldn't for a while. Did you know one day I just went through and uh, when I was testing my board and I just preloaded all your songs onto here? Yeah, no shit. You know, for, for for being one of my good friends, you you like to you like to fucking kick me in the balls every time you can. So I mean, it it's funny, no? Oh yeah, it's funny, okay. funny. Um, you know, I'm sure you don't have all the drops either. <laughs> I don't. Uh, three one five. He sent us a text message this week, but it's a video, and it was sent to us Thursday at twelve twenty a.m. I have okay. no fucking idea what this is going to be. This is this is the only thing he's ever sent us. He's never messaged us before. He says, great show, boys, and this is the video attached. What do we got here? Oh! You know who it is. You know what this is? I can't watch it. I can't watch right. it. I can absolutely cannot fucking watch it. Tuttle. It's this guy saying, what do we have here? And when he looks over to you, it's literally a guy, and all he's doing is eating some other dude's ass. Why is our show centered around this today? I'm trying to get away from this. Did I lose you again? Hello. Can you not hear me? Oh, I can hear you now. Okay. I think that's Richard Longwood. Okay, well, Richard Longwood's an asshole. (laughs) Because it's absolutely disgusting. Like... Three, five, two. We're gonna listen to them. Yeah. Um. Colton, I want to apologize. I know. I seem sometimes kind. Of- this sounds like Lummox doing his Tuttle impersonation. It's I not, know, but it really does, right? Down. And you know, God damn it! I hate. My brand new board, and it sucks. And I know that you you could do a podcast all by yourself because you're really good. <laughs> and okay, too long. Pat, there's a couple things you sent me this week that we wanted to get to. Uh, we didn't get to things last week, if you remember, because of the giant meltdown. Yeah. So we. I do want to get your view on this because I, I don't I don't think you and this was even before my time. Um, do you remember Splash Mountain um, at Disney? Did I, you ever go to Disney when Splash Mountain was there? Yes, I did. Now, I to be quite honest with you, I never really knew the premise. I know that's bad and I should know because blah, 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 blah. But I mean, I like the ride, the Splash Mountain, you know, amusement ride. But did I know the history behind it? No. It, it was so it was all based off of Splash Mar- Mountain was based off of Br'er Rabbit, which Br'er Rabbit was a character from the movie Song of the South. So Song of the South, correct? Yes. And when mm-hmm. did this movie? And it was a Disney movie. Yeah, I think it came out 60s, maybe early 70s. So it's actually before that. I'm Googling away as we speak. Song of the South was a family musical uh, and does the cover have a, a black gentleman on it? It looks yeah, like. Okay. And, and his name is Uncle Remus. Okay. Well, Uncle Remus is on the front, and this is from 1946. <laughs> so, um, I mean, so, if it's from 46, is it racist? Chances are I mean, possibly. Okay. But Br'er Rabbit played the first video, and you can get a little bit of it. So this idea. first video I'm playing is what? It it is Br'er Rabbit meets the Tar Baby. Okay. Why that Tar Baby? Did he sing out? How do you do? Br'er Rabbit, wait for the Tar Baby to say, "Fine, how are you?" 
But the Can I be honest with you? Hold on. Oh, baby, he don't say nothing. Yeah. And Brer Fox, he lay low. So, Brer Rabbit tried again. How do you do? But the tar baby ain't saying nothing. Then Brer Rabbit scratch one ear with his off behind foot and loud. He gonna find out why he can't get no answer. So when hey, I was hearing this, when you top? first sent it to me, I swear to God, because when I used to get, you know, I am the stoner of the show. When I used to get stoned in high school, my friend and I, we would act as if uh, we would turn the volume down on a, on a cartoon and we would act as if we were the voices making our own funny shit. Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought was going on here. No, this was real. This was a hundred percent. This is no editing. That is exactly how the movie. I'll fast forward a little went. bit more and play a little more. Of it. Be quiet. Be quiet. Don't make no noise. So Bear Rabbit, he started counting. One. But the tar baby ain't said nothing. Bear Fox lay low and chuckling in his stomach. <laughs> Two. Now, total. Rabbit. What was that? I'm sorry. I said Brer Fox is trying to eat Brer Rabbit. Now, what is that's, a tar baby? Because that's what they keep referencing to this person. What is what is a tar baby? Well, I mean, it was a racial epithet that, you know, people would call African-Americans back in the day. Now, did it start as that or was the tar baby originally this? And then the uh, they stay the because uh, I'm reading I'm on Wikipedia and Lord knows you can't trust it a lot. The phrase tar baby has acquired an idiotic meaning over the years, but it's used as a racist slur against black people has eclipsed other meetings. Was that the original meaning of it? I, I, I think so. Yes. Oh, well, then, yeah, this Disney's movie is probably racist, right? Okay, but all right. So, but the star of the whole movie was Uncle Remus. Uncle Remus was smart. Uncle Remus was knowledgeable. Uncle Remus was wise. And everybody loved it, right? I mean, I, 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 I know that they showed, could you believe when I was in elementary school, they showed this like movie to us? Well, yeah, the, I can, I guess. 80s? Until now, they're realizing that it's kind of racist and they need to stop playing it. So where are you getting at, though, with Disney with all this? What did Disney do? So, so they basically, um, they closed down the Country Bear Jamboree. That um, I remember. Wasn't that have a, didn't that have AC in it? Yes, it did. Okay, so Not I know that strictly, cool. strictly because of the AC. Mm-hmm. But... So on Splash Mountain, like you would have Br'er Rabbit, you would you would see Br'er Rabbit popping his head out of the briar patch. Oh, that's where. Okay, okay. And then you'd see Br'er Rabbit like poking his head out of a barrel, and then like you know, like the whole thing was based off of you know Br'er Rabbit and Song in the South, and then you know everybody was just waiting for the drop that that big steep drop where you'd get wet and cool off during the summertime. And what was the meaning of the drop? What where did that correlate to the movie? Anything? It, it just it, it it really didn't. They okay. just had a Brer Rabbit themed uh, theme park, and they recently, you know, two or three years ago, they they closed it down, and now it's open, and now it's um uh, Tatiana's uh like it's about this um uh Tatiana. You know, what are you talking about? A hair weave shop? What are you talking about? Well, no, it's about this uh, chef, this Creole. New Orleans chef that are you is fucking with me? Are, we talking about, are we still talking about Disney? Yeah, we're, t we're still talking about Disney. Okay, it's all what? based off of one of the movies they did. I've never heard of a movie about an African American New Orleans chef. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't I never heard of that Disney movie. What's that one called? Disney. I'm just saying like, it's kind of weird that, you know, they, you know, I've they heard of Aladdin. I heard of like, you know, Peter Pan. What's this? You said an um, uh, African American chef from New Orleans. Is that what you said? I think it's uh, Tiana. Tiana. And it's not a chef. She's an African American princess from New Orleans. Oh, yeah. I. Is this a rather new movie? Because mm -hmm. I've never heard of this in my life. Yeah, it came out in. Um, you said Busted Down Tatiana. What's it called? Uh, Tiana, The Princess and the Frog. Came out in 2009. And it's called Busted Down Tatiana? No, it's not Experience called. Experience the soup. <laughs> What's it called? It's called uh, uh, The Princess and the Frog, t uh, Tiana. The this Princess and the Frog. Of. Blue face, baby. Blue face, baby. Blue 
No, I, this is not it. Yeah, I think right. this is it. Bust down, Tatiana. See, bust it down, Tatiana. This is it. <laughs> I think this is it. Yeah, I bust down, Tatiana. Yeah, I, I want to see you bust down. Bust down, Tatiana. Bust down, Tatiana. I wanna see you bust that over, pick it up, not break that shit down, break it down, speed it up, then slow that shit down on the gas, slow it down, bust it, bust it. This is the new Disney. So for those that don't know, Tuttle's telling us about how the country bear jam hair dandery tar baby's been replaced with uh, busted down top the arm. Bust it. You hit that long steep, uh, that steep dive into the water that there were just big booty African women. Yeah, twerking. that's what's going on. And they had this song playing. Yeah, all right. Definitely into this one. Oh, this roller coaster so fun. Yeah. Slow it down and bust it down, Tatiana. So my question is, does it still have AC? No. Nah, well, Country Bear, it still won't open up for a couple of weeks. Oh, okay. Do you, do you find it weird if adult men go to Disney by oh, themselves? Oh, dude, those people are straight up heathens. They have something wrong with them. They shouldn't be allowed in. If you're a single man attending Disney by yourself, you just you shouldn't be allowed. That's just that. You shouldn't be allowed. And I'm actually glad you brought up Disney because I have a story that I wanted to play. It's off my phone. Let's see if I can play it. We took a phone call earlier. I should be able to play the story. It's called go. the happiest place on earth, but now some remote workers are turning Disney World into their office. You heard that, right? Yeah, I, th- didn't we? I, I think we, didn't we talk about this one? No, we didn't because we never no. got a chance to. Oh, oh yeah, because we, we had a computer Sorry. meltdown last week. Here's how yeah. I arrange my Disney World travel around my full time job. The this is how is- he arran- arranges his Disney World travel around his full time job. Here we go. Floating on social media in the post pandemic world, everyone from freelance journalists to lawyers sharing where inside the park they can plug in and get to work while also mixing in some time to visit Cinderella's castle. I so you go to the hour- park, okay? Pat, could you ever, HR Pat, you're an HR, right? Yeah. Mm hmm. Would you be happy to find out that your employee was working from home via Walt Disney World Park? Well, for one, I would probably immediately do another background check on him. And say, bust it yeah. down, Tatiana, bust it down. Oh, sorry. Yeah, because, I mean, it's just weird. There's just, I, I know it's a double standard, but there there's just things that single adult men should not do. Agreed earlier so that I can hit the parks in the afternoon after I've wrapped up my work for the day. Matt Richardson has been working remotely from Disney for two years now. What's important to my employer is that I get my work done, and that's my first priority no matter where I am in the world. He lives about a thousand miles away from Orlando, but realized he could still enjoy his favorite parks and create digital content while also maintaining a job at his tech company. I wanted to take a trip down to Disney as things were coming back, and uh, I I kept working. I just I opened up my laptop. Yep. Hetero. Ah, he might sleep with men. Top. I kept the emails going, and it made me realize that I don't necessarily have to be in my home in Ohio uh, to get work done. And there's a whole system to it. On Disney Here Blogs, you can find the best places to whip out that laptop and peruse some spreadsheets before hopping on Space whip Mountain. There are, a few spots. are you fucking kidding me? There's a whole form to these motherfuckers of where the best place in the Walt Disney World Park is to hide and actually do some work. Why would, you wanna, great for- why would you want to do that, though? Why, I, I, that's why, what I'm though? saying. Why? That's what I'm getting at. Remote working, like the lobby of the Wilderness Lodge. And it's not just Disney World in Florida. California's Disneyland also getting in on the action. I come to the parks to do that work. I live pretty close to Disneyland, um, and I have a magic key, which is like the annual pass here. I'm able to go pretty frequently, um, and... You know, I'll spend time this, during this the guy. Day. This guy. Remember, we talked about having having a uh, homosexual sex with a heterosexual woman. This yeah. guy might be having homosexual sex with a homosexual male. Okay. Uh, working. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, as I need to. Caleb Graves is an attorney and makes the most of his daily downtime with some Disney distractions. You can uh, 
finish a meeting and then go uh, watch some stormtroopers? Is that that kind of what you get to do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah right. this gets me off, man. You're not but not everyone thinks you should be able to work from a galaxy far, far away. Dr. Stefan Meyer with Columbia Business School supports... Dr. Stefan Meyer is the only guy that's got some fucking sense around here saying, look, all you single men need to not be working at Disney and go work from home at home and not be hiding in the Wilderness Lodge or in the corner of the the old woke whatever the hell this thing is called. Bust it down you're Tatiana. To work. Yeah, you're no. Paying, you're paying to work. No, you're not going to hide it and hide in the busted down Tatiana air conditioned room and do work. It's just not happening. I, I would be pissed if I was the employer and I found out that that was my, my employees were spending their time at fucking Walt Disney World. What if he was your best employee, though? I would still be pissed, dude. Really? I think so. Even though he, he completed every task. It just or- seems very disrespectful to me. I don't know. He's it's- making you a lot of money. I, I mean, I guess it all comes down to money, unfortunately. Like, I mean, it is a business, so that's what it comes down to. And if he's making you money, he's making you money. It's just, for me, whew. What if he goes like, uh, Colton, I don't know if I can work under the circumstances. I, um... Uh, oh, really? Uh, not- oh, really, HR, Pat? What's the problem? Well, I, um... I Well, I'm not being HR, Pat, right now. I'm <laughs> being uh, the guy working from the... Oh, really, Homo, lodge. Pat? What's the problem, Homo, Pat? <laughs> I I'm making you a lot of money. I've completed every single task that you have. Uh, You're my best you know, employee, Homo Pat. You're my best employee. Okay, so what is the issue? Oh my gosh. Well, the issue is, you know, I'm I'm paying you to be working from home. And quite frankly, you're 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 not. You're working from Walt Disney World at Homo Pat, and I have a problem with that, Homo Pat. That's. I mean, what else do you tell them? Well, I mean, it, it is up to the boss, no matter what. And I just, you, do you have an issue with it? Like, okay, let me ask you personally. You're in HR. Do you have an issue with your employee was getting everything done, um, but they're just doing it all? Like, every time you you have a meeting yeah, with them, a, you see the fucking humanity though. in the background of people eating their fucking turkey legs and people eating their goddamn Mickey Mouse eared in ice creams. Like, you wouldn't have an issue with that? What if he gets hurt while he's at Disney mm, and on the clock? There's the HR you- pat coming out. Yeah, so that that's the only thing, like, you know, that I could think of that would be a major issue. What if you get hurt? What if um, you slip on some melted ice cream that's on there or you get your foot caught in the escalator and you get your foot ripped off? No, you're right. Is workers' comp covering that? Who's covering that? Because, bitch, you're working at the amusement park. Uh, you got exactly, a valid point. No. I like it, HR. This is the HR pad I thrive for. Uh, a couple <laughs> more text messages. We have one from the 843. He says, what up, Colton Tuds? Love the Loner and Stoner podcast. June 6th show was absolutely hilarious no matter the technical difficulties. You guys keep pushing and doing what you do. You guys are doing great. Can't wait for the next drop shout me out debo well debo here we are shouting you out appreciate you listening uh and shoot us some more messages somebody else from the 843 love your show tuttle needs to listen to other shows on the brn maybe even cross pollinate you guys would jump higher in the order of shows if maybe you could get a call in or appearance from bubba lummy or craig and rio I think it would benefit all the shows. Just an opinion. Keep it up, guys. For sure. No, I'm, we're on constantly going back and forth. That's why last week we spoke. Uh, we had, you know, the whole debacle with the voicemail with Craig and Seth and everybody involved. So, no, we are definitely uh, listening to the other shows. As you guys know, I'm listening all the time. Tuttle's working full time, so it's a little harder for him at the moment. Um, but I do. I listen as much as we can. And what, someone, what up? What up? What was, and and I know that we're coming to the end here, but I, I just wanted to ask you, uh, what was up with that um, uncomfortable uh, text group that myself, you, and Lummy were on? And I, I get what you were trying to do to make sure that everybody wasn't mad at each other. And it just, maybe sometimes text messages don't like... Translate well? Invoke. Yeah, translate well, but it just seemed kind of weird. Like, you kept pushing it and kept, you know, bringing it up like, you know, God forbid. So what Tuttle's talking about is obviously we had was a couple things we missed today. So uh, there's one thing I need to get your reminder uh, circle back to Pat on that. So what Tuttle's talking about is uh, obviously last Friday's after show on the weekly wrap-up show, um, Tuttle got a little bit of heat, and uh, as did I as well, but Tuttle got the majority of it. 
and it was about um, you know editing saw editing audio and getting it to the main show and, and promoting the main show and stuff like that. So uh, there's a little bit of heat on Friday. If you didn't hear that after show, there was definitely some heat, mainly between Lummox and Tuttle. That's how I felt at least. Bubba came in and did a Bubba run in. He was involved. Brett was there, uh, but the heat I saw was between Lummox and Tuttle. So before the start of this week, I think it was Sunday, I reached out to both Lummox and Tuttle in a three-way message just to make sure everybody's good, saying, hey, make sure everybody's good, you know, the heat, we're just, we're just working, not shooting type of thing. And um, Lummox, to be quite frankly, was kind of short, short with us. He's like, yeah, good, no problems. Like, I'm Lummox, like, you know, if there's an issue, please tell us. Like, we'll rectify it. Like, I want to make sure we're going into this week with no problems, no issues. Everybody's happy. Hunky dory. Let's do a great week of radio. Uh, and we just weren't really getting, uh, much feedback from Lummox, but Lummox did reach out to me and he said, he's fine. If you want to read it, go ahead. It, well, you, you started off said Lummox, we good. I don't have a problem. I'm friends. That's Lummox response. I think you can tell the difference between him and I. Yeah. And then you write, huh? And he wrote back, I don't have any issues, Mr. Troublemaker. And I wrote, me neither. And then you wrote back, what trouble did I cause? I'm checking to make sure there's no drama. And if there was, so us three could work it out. Just this text, LOL, from Lummox. And then Colton said, yeah, I initiated a text. Yeah, like what the fuck are you talking about? And then I wrote, there's definitely no issue on my side for sure. And then Colton wrote, making sure there there's no real issues or anyone uh, has any concerns for us to talk about them. No issues, Colton from Lummox. <laughs> and then Colton <laughs> writes, geez, God forbid I care about my friends. And then Warren or Lummox writes, Jesus Christ. And that was it. So I still didn't really get it. I guess I really didn't get a straight answer. I thought I did get more of a straight answer from Lummox, but it sounds like I didn't. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. So, yeah, that confused the shit honest. out of me. Were, were you trying to stir up shit or were you, like, trying to really no, like, make I like, sure everybody was no, good? No, dead ass. I wanted to make sure we went into this week and make sure everything was good. Like, that's why I was kind of, you know, off air, behind the scenes. I wanted to make sure everybody was good going into this week. And uh, you see how Lummox took it. So, Mike, uh, real quick from the 941 says, can we just refer to Tuttle as HR Pat from now on? Hashtag more meltdowns, please. Uh, someone from the 641, Calvin from Canada, says, Ugh. Woo! Woo! Calvin from Canada says, so this past show, in my opinion, was the best. He's talking about the technical difficulty one. Anytime mm-hmm. I hear the old Tuttle flip out and be a Gornick as, as organic as that made, it made me smile. I could hear the smile on your voice, Colton, and knew that it was your little piece of radio gold. After listening to the wrap-up show, as the I said before, I feel Tuttle and Lummy still have some heat. Love the show. Calvin from Canada. So that was, bef- no yeah, that was over the weekend, I guess, he sent that message. Oh, no, sorry. Earlier today, before we started recording. So that was before he heard this podcast, which I initiated uh, talking about the 3 a message. So Calvin is saying he had some heat there as well. It wasn't just me that felt that. Calvin I, felt I it as well. I don't, I don't have any issue at all. Um, I'm going to make sure we'll, we'll talk after this is done to find out what piece we want to send to uh, Lummox. Yeah, and I don't think we have to send them every time. Every it's just whatever we have as a highlight. I are think we is what sure? Are we, I tell. Are we I sure? took it. I took it as send. Don't yes, yes. Actually, yeah. I will step up to the pump and say yes. Okay. If there's not I'm, something, I'm, put it on me. Fifty minutes in. If there's not something that sticks out in particular that we want played on the main show, there's no need to 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 bother Bubba on the main show with it, as they would say, shit in and shit out. Okay. And that's how we're so going to So does that mean the show sucked that we don't you have anything what? to say? Take it as them? you will. Yeah, I guess it does. I guess it does. We're going to play these last two voicemails and get the hell up out of here. This is from the 843. This may be our good old friend from Charleston, uh, Chris. You remember we couldn't quite understand him last week. What's your if this week is better? Oh, Jesus. Hey, Colton Tuttle. It's Chris again from Charleston, man. I just listened to y'all's newest release. And uh, no, what I meant by the message that I left you guys, y'all just played. Y'all have played one of my messages from the previous week, and I was pausing like crazy. What had happened is I got a hell of a buzz on. So when I called you guys, I was out of it. And I could sure as hell tell from the previous message from the week before. Yeah, buddy. But anyway, still love the show, man. 
I appreciate you listening, Chris. You were most definitely out of it, but uh, it's all good. So are we. Like I said, it's a loner and stoner podcast. Tuttle's a loner. I'm a stoner. So we're, we're both on the outside looking in as well. So don't worry about that. There were two stories I wanted to get to, Tuttle. I wanted your uh, kind of okay. your take on it. Um, both stories are related to getting yourself in trouble. Okay. Mm -hmm. This one is a woman who robbed a Lakeland and uh, McDonald's Lakeland blue, a woman who robbed a Lakeland McDonald's. She then gave the victims back her cell phone before she left the scene. Okay. Mm -hmm. So she enters, uh, she's a female. She entered the business with a handgun and a note. She forced the employees to the back of the business, took their cell phones from them and demanded money. The subject was given cash inside of a green bag to which she started to flee the scene and then realized she needed to return the cell phones back. So she did. She returned the employee cell phones back to them. Okay. You want to hear the best part about this HR Pat? What? She accidentally gave her phone. No, it's worse. She's a former employee of this exact McDonald's. Jesus Christ. So they knew her body language, her mannerisms, uh, her voice, her satire, height, weight, it all. So if you're going to rob a place, uh, probably best to make it not the one, especially if you're trying to be all secretive about it. Don't make it the one that um that you just worked at because it's going to be wow. very obvious to them. Another one, uh, another story about getting yourself in trouble. I'm going to play. This one has a video attached to it. Uh, and the headline, you know, rapper arrested for thousands of dollars in check fraud. But it's how he got caught up, which is which makes it great to me. Just absolutely one great. One piece of evidence that helped Venice police connect him to thousands of dollars stolen through check fraud. The self-proclaimed rapper from Montgomery, Alabama, faces don't, nearly don't a dozen charges for crimes in Venice. Yes, Fox 13's Kimberly Cuisson reports for us now. Police say this was an organized crime that Hudson often advertised for others to join in on. Hunter Hudson, known as Hundy K, is a rapper whose lyrics... <laughs> Known as Hundy K. Okay, hold on. Here's a rapper. We're gonna, we're, they're going to play a little snippet. Fox 13, breaking it down for us. Gave investigators a lot to go on. He would drive around throughout the whole region of the United States, and he would steal mail. According to court documents, he stole mail, altered checks, and rapped about it in these videos, which are part of a Venice police investigation that began last May. Investigators say a resident mailed three checks from the Venice post office, then discovered the checks had been altered for far greater amounts. Investigators received additional calls, including from the Venice Yacht Club, where seven out of 35 business checks had been altered and more than $75,000 taken. The checks were deposited at various banks in Georgia and Alabama. The bank in question actually had very good surveillance and was able to get his tag number on his car, and he actually drove his car to make this fraudulent. It doesn't take very good surveillance to get a fucking tag number out of bank. I mean, Deposit, which oh, why uh, would you grab an- your own car, though? Why would you do like, any of this? Why would you rap about it? Talking about I can teach you the ways, learn how to steal people's mail. Need to go with the face that we had on the camera. Captain Eric Hill says Hudson advertised for co-conspirators through social media. His uh, tweets say Navy six uh, six K instantly fifty fifty split. Got two slots left. He goes face card verified everywhere. Get with me, guaranteed payout. Whoever joined in would take half the cut. He would wash those checks or use the account information on those checks to then make fraudulent deposits into other individuals' accounts who would agree to be part of this scam with him. And six additional individuals have been charged in connection to the crimes. It's really sad because a lot of our citizens here in the community are on fixed incomes. Hudson from Montgomery, Alabama, was brought into the Sarasota County Jail on Thursday. Just great level of cooperation. So yeah, fucking idiot. He literally raps in his song, I'm going to show you what swiping will get you, shit like that. And he's and he's showing these people's mail that he's stealing and shit. Genius. He's a fucking is, genius, he is. But is... it? Will that hold up in court? Because it's it's a song. You know, a lot of rappers. Yeah, brag but about, dude, like, I, it's a music video. It's like video yeah, evidence. I, yeah, but at the same time, I mean, just because you see something on TV doesn't mean it's real. It's it's all creative, like licensing, right? I mean, like he could be making all that shit up. I don't I don't see how you can use any of the music in a trial. I don't. I don't either. I guess we'll see if it holds up, right? I guess and we'll see. And back, to, back to the woman, uh, McDonald's yeah. that did the robbery. Uh, number one mistake. Well, the first day mistake she made was robbing in Polk County. True. Very true. I would agree with that. 
One more voicemail. We're out of here. It's from the 281. Tolton, it's Craig. Uh, we, we cleared up the whole date fiasco. So I think, not I think, this guy got us last week. Remember last week we went through the whole Craig deal and how it was a fake one, blah, blah, blah. So it's yeah. this gentleman again. So this, at least this boy, I know it's a fake. Sir, you're a fake, but you're a pretty damn good fake. I'll let you go through. Let's Tolton, see what you got going on it's Craig. Uh, we, we cleared up the whole date fiasco with Ubs himself. Rio even shifted his birthday trip because he knows how special this could be. This is true, by the way. All this so far is true. And by this, of course, I mean the Juneteenth celebration at Latin Sons 2400 Dr. MLK Jr. Street. South, south. In beautiful South St. Petersburg, Florida. On Saturday, June 15th, 1 to 3 p.m. Noon to 3 now. But, yes, that all that is correct. I'm hoping to see everybody there. Come on down. That will also kick off. Just a little another promotion here. Father and Son Saturdays. All summer long. You bring your kid in only with a father figure. And both of you get $5 off your haircut. Also true. They're doing that. $5 each. This guy's got it down so far. That's a great deal. They're not going to be all summer long. All summer long on Saturdays. So you got to put that part in there. What 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 HR Pat? What 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 you got? I said you won't be giving out many haircuts. Oh, that's fucked. What is this about? That's just straight up fucked. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Some guy calling. For real, bro. That's fucking fucked. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to make the joke. I'm, I'm not boy. really that way, but I had to. <clears throat> That's crazy. But well, good show, fellas, and and uh, send my uh, condolences to to. This is so Zeth- bad. Please just get this over with. <laughs> He's. I'm stopping him. There's another thirty seconds left, but I stopped him. I did want him to do the promotion, though. We will be out at Latin Sons. Uh, that's going to be uh, this Saturday. That's this Saturday. We'll be at Latin Sons. L A T and Sons. For those, you what about know, single moms, single moms. No, I mean, you're welcome bring, to go out there, but kid. you know, bringing your, you don't get the you know. $5 off. No, you don't get the $5 okay. off. All right. So that's this Latin happens. sons. That's this Saturday, June 15th. That's 2400. Dr. MLK Jr. South in South St. Pete will be there from noon to three. Uh, all the Bubba army guys from the BRN will be there. That's Bubba himself, Rhett. Lummox, Dr. Dan's going to make an appearance. I will be out there. Of course, the merch crick doing her thing, as she always is. And then the two stars are three stars of the podcast, I should say. Uh, Seth, the host, and Craig and Rio. Saturday, June 15th, noon to 3, 2400 Dr. MLK Street South. Title anything? Do I need? Do we need to take that joke out? I don't think so. I mean, okay. it's, 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 it's a heavy hitter. It's a heavy hitter for damn sure. And you might get some heat. But um, from who? From uh, will it be from Bubba or Seth? Because ah, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> All right, I I can't listen to you because I don't know. You could be setting me up. I, I'm not I setting you up. I think you're gonna. I'm just. I'm gonna shoot you 100 straight on this. Leave it in. You are gonna get some heat. I mean, if you can deal with the heat, leave it in. If you're a little okay, bitch, I'm, leave it out and run. Like, like I've never been able to not deal with the heat. You Although, can deal like, with the heat. You can. You'll deal with the heat just fine. So we, 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 what we determined, we don't have an outro song yet. I mean, we have this no. new song. We have our new song. That's it. I'm good. I'd we rather just good. go out with Tatiana dropping it low or whatever. Okay, we can do that. Oh, uh, see, I wanted to see if you still had it. Of course I Thanks, have baby. it. It's right here. Bust it down, Tatiana. Come on. You yeah, know. Right. Bust down, Tatiana. Yeah, I, I want to see you bust down. Bust down, Tatiana. Bust down, Tatiana. I wanna see you bust down. Pick it up, now break that shit down. Break it down. Speed it up, then slow that shit down on the gang. Slow it down. Bust it, bust down. Bust down, bust it, bust it, bust down on the gang. Bust down, Tatiana.